Hello everybody and welcome back in for another episode of Swiss Cheese and Beats. We are on episode 8 and today we are going to be learning a new exercise. Well technically it's not new but it's new to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Daniel and thank you so much for all the support so far. If you have yet to do so, please consider subscribing. Remember that when we hit the 200 mark, we will be doing our very first giveaway. And so at the end of the episode, should you happen to like what you see, please consider sharing on your own social networks. A very special announcement and a huge thank you goes to Drumlines of America. Drumlines of America will now be carrying Swiss Cheese and Beats episodes on their blog that you can find at drumlinesofamerica.com. You can also find a link to that blog in the description down below, as well as links to their social media platforms. So if you have yet to do so, please check out Drumlines of America, but before you do that, let's give them a huge round of applause. And lastly, don't forget that the exercise we covered today is available for you in sheet music form absolutely free. You can find that at SwissCheeseBeats.com as well as all other music and notes from previous episodes. So the exercise we are going to learn today is 16th note accent or 16th note grid. There are two concepts that we've already covered that are going to be included in this exercise. The first one is understanding how to identify types of strokes. If you have yet to see that video, you can find a link for that video down below. And the second concept is understanding the 421 pattern. So if you have yet to watch that video, that link is also down below, or you can click this link right up here, and that'll take you directly to a playlist that includes both of those videos. So on to 16th note grid. This is another one of those classic fundamental drumline exercises that's been around for a very long time and over time it has progressed into what is now called a grid. Before we get into different types of grids, we have to learn the fundamental pattern of the exercise. So this exercise will have four different patterns. Every single pattern in the exercise is based around this rhythm, one E and a. The basic idea of this exercise is that there's one single accent in each beat and the accent is placed on a different part of the 16th note rhythm for each different pattern. So we're gonna have four patterns and all four patterns are gonna be the same rhythm. The only thing that's going to change is where the articulation is placed. So in pattern A, the accent is going to be placed on the downbeats. In pattern B, the accent will then move over one 16th note partial onto the E of the beat. Pattern C, the accent will move over one more 16th note onto the upbeat. And pattern D, the accent will then move over to the last partial of the 16th note rhythm being placed on the uh of the beat. Now we could very easily just put these patterns together and just simply try to play through it. However, it is very important that you do so with the correct types of strokes. So there are a couple of things that are gonna help simplify this exercise for you. Number one, there is not a single rebound stroke with the sticking we are going to play today. The second thing to know is that Every single accent in the exercise is going to be a downstroke. Now, a quick cheat for you to remember about downstrokes is that unless it's the very first note you play, every single downstroke is preceded by either a rebound stroke or an upstroke. However, we've already identified that there's not a single rebound stroke in this exercise. So for this exercise, every downstroke you play, which is an accent, is preceded by an upstroke. Now, moving on to the exercise, we're gonna play each pattern to start off a total of four counts. Our first pattern is pattern A, and there is an accent on the downbeat. Identifying the strokes for this pattern is that we look at the very first note we'd play on the right hand, which would be an accent, and then we look at the next right hand we'd play, which would be a non-accent. So we're going from an accent to a non-accent. That first accent we play is going to be a downstroke. The next note is a non-accented left hand, and our next left hand is also non-accented, so that would be a tap stroke. And then we'd have a non-accented note. We're going to play this pattern again, so we're going to an accented note in the right hand, that would make it an upstroke. And our very last left hand is non-accented, we're going to another non-accented note, that would be a tap stroke. Once again, if you are unsure about how to identify these types of strokes, you can tap right here. That'll take you back to the identifying fundamental strokes video. And then you can make your way back here to finish off the exercise. Now, since we play each pattern four times, it's very easy to think that it's the same types of strokes for all four beats. 
Well, that's just not the case because we are moving from one pattern to another. And those transition beats moving from count four of one pattern into count one of another pattern, the stickings will be different. So for pattern A, we're gonna play the same sticking for the first three beats. However, in count four, the strokes will then change to a downstroke, a tap stroke, a tap stroke, and an upstroke. The upstroke is now placed on the uh of count four, and that is to prepare you for the accent coming in the left hand in pattern B. So here's pattern A, and notice how the strokes changed in count four, and I'm going to stop with my sticks in the position in order to be ready to play pattern B. So now pattern B, the accent moves over one sixteenth note. Both right hands in this pattern are going to be tap strokes. The first left hand is an accent and that will be a downstroke. And the second left hand is a non-accent, but we're going to an accent, so that would be an upstroke. These strokes would stay true for the first three beats. However, since we're moving from pattern B to pattern C, on count four, the strokes would change. We would now have a tap stroke, a downstroke, a tap stroke, and another tap stroke. So here's pattern B. Again, notice how the strokes change at count four. And once again, I'll stop my sticks in the prep position in order to be moving towards pattern C. Pattern C is a little different. The sticking stay exactly the same. So the accent moves over one more 16th note. It's now on the upbeat. So our first right hand is going to be an upstroke. Both of our left hands will be tap strokes and the accent on the upbeat will be a downstroke. So here is pattern C. Our last pattern is pattern D. The accent moves over to the last 16th note of the beat. Both right hands that we play are tap strokes. Our very first left is an upstroke. And of course the accent is a downstroke. Just like pattern A and B, the sticking stays true for the first three beats. However, on count four, the sticking changes because we will be moving back to pattern A to start the twos. So the sticking for count four of pattern D will be a tap stroke, an upstroke, an upstroke, a downstroke. So here is pattern D. So let's put all of these patterns together. This is going to be the fours, meaning we'll play each pattern four times. Again, notice how the stickings change in pattern A, B, and D on count four in order to make each one of those transitions nice and smooth. Now that we have the stickings for the fours, we're pretty much home free for the rest of the exercise. All we have to do now is take the stickings that are on count three and count four of each pattern. By playing this, count four will stay the same in order to make each one of those transitions nice and seamless. So remember, we're gonna play each pattern twice and then we're gonna repeat all of those patterns one more time to play the twos two times. Now for the ones, all we're gonna do is take our stickings from count four of each pattern. We're gonna put all four of those together. We're gonna play this four times. And we're gonna add one note at the very end, which would also be an accent, as well as a downstroke, in order to complete the exercise. Now before I play the entire exercise for you, there are a couple of common pitfalls that happen to many people. The first one is playing in time to a metronome. Usually the E's and the U's, or the accents on the left hand, are known to cause some timing issues for some people. Some people feel confident enough to play it with a metronome, yet when it comes to moving their feet or tapping their foot, then things start to get a little bit shaky. This would be the second most common error that I see, and that is that our feet end up landing with the accent instead of staying on the downbeat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you four different ways to fix almost any timing issue that you have. All four of these should be done with a metronome. 
And if you can do them confidently, I would go ahead and add either a foot tap or mark time depending on what you're working on. The very first method would be to click your sticks on the downbeat and to count the entire rhythm out loud. And since this rhythm has accents, go ahead and count those accents a little bit louder than the rest of the notes in order to emphasize the feeling and the relationship between the accent and the downbeat. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. The second way to fix these issues is to click your sticks on the downbeat again, but this time we're only going to count the accents out loud. One, two, three, four, E, 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 and, and, and and a, 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 a one. The third way to fix these issues would be to use composite rhythms. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our right hand, we're gonna play downbeats in the right hand on the rim, and we're gonna play only where the accents would fall on the head with our left hand. When you feel comfortable with this, then go ahead and switch by putting the downbeats on the rim in the left hand, and then go ahead and play the accents only in the right hand on the head. And the fourth way to fix these issues would be to play the exercise, and as you're playing the exercise, verbally count the downbeats out loud. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three four, one. When you're able to do all four of these pretty consistently, a lot of your timing issues are gonna get fixed. And the great thing about this is that you'll be able to come back to these methods should you run into a timing issue again. So I'm going to play this exercise for you three times. The first time will be at the tempo we've been going at, which is 80 beats a minute. The second time will be at 100 beats a minute. And the last time will be 120 beats per minute. I would say that the most important thing about this exercise, other than staying in time, would be to understand where those upstrokes move to and executing those upstrokes properly in order to prepare you for all the downstrokes. Now, talking about grids is an entire different rabbit hole. However, in order to get you started on the grid process, I would go ahead and plug in a couple of your favorite stickings into this exercise. I have two favorite stickings that I love to plug into this exercise. The first would be to play the entire exercise with paradiddle sticking, and the second would be to play the entire exercise with double stroke roll sticking. The possibility with stickings in this exercise is huge. So leave me your two or three favorite stickings you like to use when you play this exercise. Leave those down in the comment section below. And as always, you can find the sheet music for this exercise at SwissCheeseBeats.com. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. I very much appreciate it. Once again, if you have yet to do so, please consider subscribing. Remember that when we hit our 200 subscriber mark, we will have our very first giveaway. 
Don't forget to check out drumlinesofamerica.com. A big thank you to them once again. And that does it for this episode of Swiss Cheese and Beats. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next time. Yeah.